Opala in tonight's Eye on Earth. Climate change is having a big impact on our winters here in New England. Of course, forests and wildlife and nature are trying to adapt. So too are people who rely on the winter months to make a living. As WBZ Chief Meteorologist Eric Fisher shows us, the changes have them worried about the long term. It's not the sultry summers that are warming the fastest in New England, nor is it the later foliage falls. Winter is the season that's outpacing the rest. Is this normal? And unfortunately, this is really what normal is going to look like. So this isn't what every year is going to be like. We're going to have some years where there would be snow behind us. And maybe it would ha will happen in a couple of weeks. But actually, this is what the climate scientists are saying, that we are going to have winters looking like this in Massachusetts. Tony Lynn Morelli, a research ecologist with the USGS Northeast Climate Adaptation Science Center, says we've been on this warming path for a while now. And the data shows just that. All of the five warmest winters on record have come this century, and the current one is going to be added to that list. Here we are, bare ground, exposure to these still very pretty cold temperatures in the winter, and that causes all kinds of stress for the trees, for the plants, for the small mammals, for the insects that are trying to make it to the spring. Plants and animals have no choice but to adapt to whatever is happening. In the case of our warming winters, they're all on the move. Tony says coyotes, bobcats, different species of ticks, southern flying squirrels, all examples of animals that are spreading north. While spruce trees are finding it too mild, invasive plants like Asian bittersweet and even kudzu, a tree-killing vine in the south, are coming our way. We can see the impacts in nature of these warming winters, whether it's less ice or it's these changes in what animals and plants that we see. But it's also having an impact on our pastimes and our relationship with how we enjoy the winter season. As you can see, my billboard says, think snow. I'm ready to change it to snow, damn it. Jim Richard is the colorful media director of the Knox Trail Riders, who have been snowmobiling over the hills and fields of western New England since 1971. These people live for winter, but 2023 hasn't impressed. In the 20 years I've been on Otis Reservoir, it's the first year that my bay didn't freeze it all the way across. While Jim says their armada of sled riders sees a cycle of good and bad years, this particular one has been a full-scale retreat. Everyone's just been migrating north this year. Yep, yep. It's like a, like a boat versus standing on the dock fishing. You gotta go find the fish. But even up north, it's largely been up to the snow guns to keep pace. The biggest things that we're seeing is that the season is starting a little bit later and it seems to be ending a little bit earlier, at least as far as temperatures go. Jessica Keeler with Ski New Hampshire says what's been most apparent is not necessarily a lack of seasonal snowfall, but it's erratic nature. We're seeing like less frequent snowfall um, events. Um, so less frequent snow and when we do get it it does seem to be coming you know in, in bigger events so you know we might get like a foot of snow but then we won't see snow again for weeks winters have always been extremely variable in new england and most mountains have evolved to embrace that challenge with more efficient snowmaking and more eco-friendly infrastructure but the recent changes are reason for concern do you think that winter sports in new england are threatened in the decades ahead um i think there is a threat I think there's a threat if we don't act. So while we wait for the next big snowstorm, what is a winter enthusiast to do? Take a ice fishing. What's everyone doing for fun right now? I'm well, giving interviews to weatherman in Boston. <laughs> <laughs> And we appreciate that, Jim. You know, winter is, is, like we said, a very variable season. But this year, I mean, we've had three colder than average days in the last 57. So about two months straight without much of any colder than average weather, except for two that were extreme. And would you be surprised if we saw 40 inches of snow between now and the end of March? And so we see these clumps and these bursts and everything just seems to be on the extreme end of the scale. Yeah, that's tough. They're, it's real tough. They were good natured about it to talk to you, but you could hear the weariness in their voices when yeah. they're relying on a season like this. Well, you know, for a lot of people, you live in a place where if it's not snow, and there's an ice on a lake in the winter, not a lot to do. You build your life yeah. around yep. the seasons. And when the season doesn't happen, well, what can you do with that? All right, Eric Fisher, thank you so much.